Hello, my name is Brandon Clayton, the Algebra Guy, and today our lesson will discuss linear transformations, linear transformations. So let's jump right into it. What's the teak that we want to uh, establish and cover this day? It's a.3e. Determine the effects on the graph of the parent function, f of x equals x, the parent function. So the parent function is going to be your most basic function for a line is f of f of x equals x which we'll see in a second is just a straight diagonal positive sloped line but we'll see that in a second so when it's replaced by these types of transformations all these letters a d c and b represent some transformation that's happening when you pl place a uh, place a number there so we're going to look at each one of those but i'm going to do it a little bit different because transformations are a little bit uh, tough to talk about in a static form I'm gonna to go to more of a dynamic type of viewing and you'll see what I mean here in just a second so for these specific values a B C and D what happens to the line when you add these numbers in these particular places so the way I want to show it to you is both using the graphing calculator and we're going to explore what happens to the parent function when you change a B C and D and I'm also going to look at a website called Desmos and we'll practice looking through the transformations there so let's jump right to it i'm going to go to my desmo screen actually i'm going to pull up both so you can see we work them at the same time all right we're going to start off with the most basic parent graph that you can have for a line all right so the most basic parent graph you can have for a line is as follows so i'm starting off with this f of x equals x that's just y equals x so if you were to put a table up, it'll, it'll, be, it'll look like when x equals 1, y equals 1, when x equals 2, y equals 2. And that's what you see, go, see going on here, right? So here's a point 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and negative 1, negative 1. So that's a parent graph. That's the most basic uh, form of a line. So what we really want to know is what happens when you change certain components of this function. For instance, the first question we'll answer, actually we'll answer uh, four questions. We've got the A, B, C, and D. If I put a number in front of this x in this form, a of a of a times f of x, so I put some number there. How does it change the graph? I put a two, three, five. Then we secondly we're going to talk about what if the d changes? The d is a plus or a minus. Now I'm going to give you a hint. It's the y-intercept. So what if you add or subtract? When you add a number or subtract it on the end, what happens to the line? Can you? Uh, imply or make a prediction of what, what would happen there and what if you have parentheses with an x plus a number what changes the line um, if you have a b times a number in that parentheses and then we'll do some practice so we'll look at what that looks like on both the calculator screen and this desmo screen um, so let's get to it so right now we have a slope of what for this graph right here well i'm hoping that you're saying we have a slope of one because there's a you can there's understood to be a one right there in front so I can even type a one here it's not going to change the graph at all but you can have a one right here because it's already there so we have a slope of one now I'm not going to write that because I want you to get used to seeing it without it since that's how it's going to be shown but what happens when I put a two there now it doesn't matter if it says t of x I just wrote that to show it's a different function but what if I put a 2 of x how does it change well really we're just increasing the what the slope so you should already intuitively understand this from some work we've done already when the slope increases the slope increases so you can expect to have here's the vocabulary a steeper line so if I click on this one what's going to happen look now I have a steeper line so if you just think about walking up this hill or mountain, this is more steep. Now, what if I took it to 3x? What would happen to that line? I know you get it right. It's basic, but I want you to get it so well that it, the questions that you answer for this are just silly and so easy. You're like, oh, please, I can do that in my sleep. So as this goes to three, this line is going to increase its slope. So the steepness also increases. Remember, I'm saying steepness because that's the vocabulary that the test likes to use when talking about the the uh, uh, slope being increased or decreased. So what if we went to five? Well, obviously, it'd be even more steep. So or steeper. So you can see what's happening as we increase. Now, if I go back to my calculator, you'll see the same thing. I'm going to see these are all the components that we talked about, the A, the B in here, the C, uh, C and the D. Now, they're all in uh, parent 
in a, in a paragraph. So just in a very basic standard form, I don't want to say standard form to confuse you, but it's it's in the parent graph. It has all the the basic attributes right now. So a is equal to one, c is equal to zero. There's nothing there that's subtracting from x. D is equal to zero. There's no change in the, the D and the B was e equal to one. So one times X is still X. Nothing changes, just a basic form. The same thing we see over here. Now watch what happens as I increase the X value. I'm gonna catch this and I'm just gonna increase it. Look what happens to that line. Just as we suspect it, right? So as we increase that, it increases the slope. Now I'm gonna go back to zero because I wanna look at some other things, right? <clears throat> I wanna look at what happened if I have a three fourths X. What happens when it drops below one? What do you think is gonna to happen to the steepness of this line? So let's do that and look at that. So now the line becomes less steep because it's between zero and one, it's right underneath, it's just below the steepness of that one and less steeper would be one half and even less steeper, if that's a word, would be one fifth. So we see that as you um, decrease the slope or that a value, the steepness of that line decreases. Now notice that those numbers are all between zero and one. So, and I say that because we're about to explore what happens when we get to zero and that number gets to negative. So I'm gonna erase those and go back to our parent graph. And you can see that on my calculator too. If I would have gone but, but, uh, below one, you see this 0.5, it drops below there. So um, everything is in the agreement. It's the same thing. But what if I have a zero X? zero x what what kind of slope is that well you have a zero slope do you remember what a zero slope looks like i hope you're saying a horizontal line if you do pat yourself on the back because if i click right here for zero this green line you may be, barely be able to see is going straight across horizontally on the x-axis there's no slope you can walk on that one it's simple it's easy so considering the path we just took where we had three fourths one half one fifth and it's getting the slope is getting smaller and less steep all it is zero what do you think is going to happen when we get to a negative well I think you can kind of see the pattern don't you so we can see that it's going to go now it's it's going down so instead of none of these are in, all of those were increasing now we're actually going negative but what if we would have slowly worked our way up there so we got negative one half negative one and it's now it's getting even more steep, but in a negative direction, and then negative two, even more steeper, and then negative 10. So look, it's getting steeper more quickly, but now it's going down. So that's really everything you need to know is regarding the A value changing. So that number in front changes the steepness, which is makes which makes sense, right? Because we've always talked about um, slope, and we understand how slope works. And I can demonstrate this on our calculator too. As I, as I go down, this line also starts to become more and more negative. So I like for you to see it dynamically like that moving, and you know that all the numbers in between are having an effect as well. So let's go back to one for our standard. A is equal to one bam there we go all right so now what happens if we change the d this last number on the end what do you think is going to happen so look at some of the examples i have here x plus one x plus two x plus, well how's this line going to change if you get the first and i promise the next one's going to be really easy well remember i said that it's simply the y-intercept so all that's going to happen is the y-intercept is going to change what's the y-intercept now in parent graph well, there's nothing there, so it's zero. So the y-intercept is really at right here, at zero. But what happens if that number changes to not zero? As a matter of fact, I can even type zero here and it doesn't change anything, plus zero. Look, nothing changes. But what if I would have pressed a one there? Let's see how it would change, what do you think? So let me zoom out a little bit in case we see anything else. Boom, look at that. Just as you hopefully anticipated, it's a wind us up at our one. It just shifted up one unit. And that's the language you're gonna see on the test. It's gonna shift up one unit. Or if you want it to be more sophisticated, you may see this too. It's a vertical shift, right? Up one unit um, because vertical is up and down. So a positive shift is all kinds of ways to say that. But in general, you're gonna see some kind of shift 
up one unit. Now, you can imagine what's gonna happen if I do X plus two and change that D to a two, it's gonna shift up two units. And two or three, same thing, three units, so now we got a three there. What's gonna happen if I X minus two? Yep, you get it. X minus two, now we got a Y intercept going through negative two and X minus four going through at the negative four. So, makes sense, and that's really all, as you can see, that covers the Y intercept. Because that's what it is. I'm going to call it what it is. It's just the one except changing. Um, so that's how the parent graph is going to be affected if you change that D value. And, and it could be any letter. Don't get caught up on the D. But you just need to understand that when you add something to the end of that function, it's going to change the one except. All right. What if you have this X plus C in the parentheses? What do you think is going to happen there? It looks complicated, but you'll be surprised it's not. So what do you think is going to happen? All right. So we already started with our f of x. Um, did I erase my first one? No. Okay. We already started with our f of x. What if I do parentheses x plus 3? Well, you got to look at it carefully because putting it in parentheses doesn't change anything <laughs> at all compared to what we just did. So x plus 3 is the same thing. So it's going to go up to the... Uh, to the three on the wire intercept. The thing that you want to think about differently, and this is going to come up later when we talk about quadratics, is now where is the x intercept? Notice that it's a negative three. Look at here. So my x intercept is going to be a negative three. So when I put this in parentheses, I know that I have an x intercept at negative three when that line shifted up three. So it's going to shift everything to the left. Let me write this. See if I can write this. So this one's going to shift uh, everything to the left three units. Uh, three units. So that's what you that's what you want to be looking for there, and it's going to shift everything up three units. So everything now I say that because we could have started at a negative three, and if I had an x minus three, then I'm going to shift it three more over. So you want to keep that in mind. All right, x plus two, same thing. We're going to shift to the left two units. It's the opposite of what you would think for the x values, um, but we do still go up to two on the y intercept because that's really what we're looking at. So those are the same. Matter of fact, if I clicked on x plus three here and this x plus three, guess what? They're the exact same line. So you can't see any other line pop up because they're the same line. All right, um, what if you have a number inside that parentheses? So like a two here, how does that change everything? Well, two times x is the same thing as two times x up here when we had it for a. So that doesn't change anything either compared to our a changing. So if I put a two times, now if I work this out, two times two is four. So that's just gonna make this four x. So now I'm just gonna have a slope of four. So that really doesn't change. Now, I'll be honest with you, this transformation doesn't appear very often on the test, uh, probably because it's so similar to the transformation when you have a slope transformation on the A. So, but just know that it's the same thing. Two times three is gonna give you a slope of six. So now it's even more steep there. And then right here, four X, um, like I just said, two X. This is the same thing as this. Two times two X is the same thing as four X. Look, so if I click off of here, it's the same line. And the same thing for two times three, the same line. This line is gonna be the same as this one. All right, so let's practice a little bit. Now, I forgot to use my graph over here, so let me illustrate some of these. Um, so if my C changes, watch what happens. If my C gets greater, this was, gets more positive. So this becomes X minus 2.5. So that's why we see this thing moving to the right, because it's actually minus, so it's opposite of what we just were saying, um, just like we were saying. All right, so let's put that back, and we saw that the wire intercept, if you change that, you increase this, it goes up and it comes down, and if you go below, it goes down. So everything is just as we talked about. Um, same thing with our B. Um, the same thing with our B. If I increase my B, it's just like the A. So if I double this, it's gonna increase the slope um, because B times X is gonna give us that same slope effect. Now I wanna do a couple of practice problems with us to see if you can understand what the transformations are gonna be. So here's the graph we're looking at. Let me get this <clears throat> to, for my whole screen here. All right, so this is what the graph is going to look like. What would happen if I put 2x here? So you can just say this out loud or write on your paper or guess it, but I just want to get you to think through this. All right, so 2x will look like this. What would happen to the slope? 
should be doubled, right? So it should be increased. What would have what transformation happened with a 5x? So the slope has been uh, multiplied by five. So originally it was one right here, but now it's multiplied by five, so it's going to be steeper. Good. So what transformations happen on this one? Two x plus one. Well, two transformations, right? The slope has been doubled and uh, it's been shifted up one. So look, is is more the slope is more steep and it shifted a wireness step up one. So we, that's what we can expect. Negative three x plus three. Well, there's three things happening, right? So now we have a negative is flipped across the x axis is how they'll call this. Because um, if I if I fold up the paper along the x axis, this line up here will end up down here. So now it's going to be a, a reflection across the x axis. Multiply by three will make it more steep and shift it up three units. So I better bag up. So shift it up three units. So watch what happens. Bam. So it shifted up the wireness of three units. It's more steep and it's negative. Negative four x plus one. What's going to happen? Shift up one unit and down, going uh, negative slope and have a, uh, a steepness of negative four. So it's going down pretty quickly. Now you usually won't see this one, but you should know how to work that one, right? Two times two is four, so it's going to have a slope of four x, and it's going to shift up one unit. There it is. Um, same thing as this one. These two are the exact same thing. Negative two x plus three. This is going to shift up. Negative two x plus three is going to shift up. How many units? Three units, and reflect across the x-axis because it's negative, and have a slope of two, so that's going to double. Looks like that. Three-fourths is not zero, but it's less than one. So what do you expect that slope to look like? Not as steep as one, right? So it's going to be a little bit less than one. And we're going to shift it down to negative three. So here it is right here. And notice it's not as steep. They're probably going to, well, not probably, they're going to intersect somewhere down, down there. So that concludes our lesson over transformations. Let me get back to my screen as we close out. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I want to cover a couple of two, a couple of star problems um, to make sure we got the same concept down. Um, so let's do a couple of star problems to show you how it showed up on the test. A student graph f of x equals x and g of x equals f of x plus three on the same coordinate grid. Which statement describes how the graphs f and g are related? F and g are related. So let's think about that. The, the graph of f is just x, right? And we have f of x plus three. So what is f of x? F of x, is, f of x is just x. So when they say f of x plus three, all they're saying is x plus three. That's all they're saying. They're saying we have x, because f of x is equal to three. These are the same thing. So what transformation happened? We started with just x. Now we got x plus three. Come on, you can do this one. We started with x and we got x plus three. So this last number on the end changed. Now, by the way, you could graph this as we just showed. We could graph x, um, f of x equals x, and then graph f of x, um, x plus three, and look at the two to, to discover that. So, but you should be thinking that this last number changed. So this is my y intercept. So it should be just shifting up. The graph of f is shifted three units up to create g. And that's really what we're thinking about here. The graph of f is steeper. No, that would have to change the slope. The graph of f is shifted three units down to create the graph of g. No, this is shifting up. This is a positive three. And the graph of s is less steep. No, the, the slope did not change um, to something uh, less than one. So we're going to keep it that way. Linear function f of x is uh, f of x equals x is graphed in a coordinate plane. That's just a parent function. The graph of a new line is formed by changing the slope of the original line. Listen to this, changing the slope of the, the slope of the original line to two thirds and the y intercept to four, y intercept to four. So originally we had just um, f of x equals x. Now they changed it to f of x equals, and they'll probably name it differently, but we're gonna keep it that way. Now the slopes change and the y intercepts change. All right, so which statement describes the relationship of these two? The graph of the new line is steeper 
So here's one is my original. Is two thirds steeper than one? No, it's less than one. It's obviously a smaller number. It's a fraction of that. Uh, it's 0 0.6666 and going on forever. So we know that's not it. It's not, I'm gonna cross out the not steeper part. So I remember what part of that was not right. The y to step be translated down? No, it's plus four. So translated is a straight line. That's a word that sometimes you use in eighth grade to talk about transformation. So translate is another word other than just shift. The graph of the new line is less steep. Yep, it is less steep. And the y step has been translated up. Yes, both of those are true. So I'm gonna hold on to this answer, but I'm gonna double check to everything else. The graph of the new line is steeper. No, it's not steeper. The graph of the new line is less steep. Yes, it's less steep. And the y step has been translated down. No, so this is not it. Um, this isn't it. So my only answer is B. And that's really that simple, guys. I told you it's it, it's not that complicated. We went, we went over more problems and, and with more sophistication than you're probably gonna see on the test. All right, did we cover our objective? Yes, yes, yes. Determine the effects of the graph of the parent graph when all these are transformed, when it's replaced by this A, this B, this C, this D. So thank you for tuning in. My name is Brandon Clayton, the Algebra Guy, and I will see you next lesson.